What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm going to be kicking off the Java for Beginners course. And in this video in particular, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to install the JVM, how to install IntelliJ, and teach you all of the things that you need to go uh, need to know just to get a program running and do like 90% of the things that you are going to be doing in your day-to-day -day life as a student, self-taught developer, or even a Java developer. So let's start off with the big reason. A lot of people want to know why we use Java and the bit, really the biggest reason is people know that there's a lot of jobs in it, but it's kind of like the chicken in the egg why are there a lot of jobs in it mostly because java is very popular in the real uh, enterprise environment banks telecom manufacturing um major industries use java because of its scale its type checking and how well it works with relational databases more specifically things like mysql and postgres people uh Universities also like it too because it teaches students object-oriented programming and in order to use Java, you have to know, like there's no way around it, like you have to know object-oriented programming. So that's usually why schools tend to lean more towards Java as opposed to things like Python and maybe even JavaScript. So brief history, a lot of times people just want to know the history, but you really don't need to. Um, the th history goes like this. It was invented by Sun Microsystem. Sun Microsystem is popular in the mainframe, or it was very popular. Sun Microsystem used to be a really big thing, and they, it was born out of a need for a cross-platform language. Now, back then, cross-platform was a really big deal, but in today's world, cross-platform is you almost expect cross-platform development. And not only that, but it inadvertently spawned a, a really abstracted language. Back then, it was very abstract, but uh, an abstract language because people didn't need to code in C++ and C anymore. And Java was a very good abstracted language that allowed people to be more productive in less time. It was eventually bought by Oracle, and if you want to learn more about that, check out like Larry Ellison. He's a really popular guy. If you want to learn more about Oracle, feel free. You can go down that rabbit hole on your own. So <laughs> the timeline is going to go like this. First, we're going to install the JVM. What is the JVM? The JVM is essentially a, it's like the in the middle of the sandwich that's going to actually produce the code for the Java program. So you put in Java code, it spits out an actual program. And as long as you have that environment, it can actually, as long as you have the JRE environment, it will actually run. We will talk about that more as time goes on. Um, IntelliJ is a really fancy editor for Java. You can uh, change your font and it looks really cool. It's really easy on the eyes and you can just click a, a, a green button and it works. Um, also going to show you quick tips. I'm going to show you how to make a hello world program. And then after that, best part of all, I'm going to show you how to debug. So let's go ahead. Let's get out of this PowerPoint and let's start going and downloading what we need. So first things first, we're going to need, uh, the JVM. So in order to do this, you just go to Oracle's website. If you're on Linux, choose Linux. <laughs> if you're on Mac, choose a Mac. If you're on Windows, Make sure to choose Windows. Go with the MSI installer. It's the easiest. I've never used this one. I've just always used the MSI installer and it works very well for me. So when you click it and you open it, you're going to get brought to this. Just install it in the default place that it shows. My screen's gonna go dark for a second because it uh, requires privileges. And Next steps, that's if you want more tutorials, but you're in my tutorial now, so you are with me. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and install IntelliJ. You can choose whichever one that you want to. You can get, a, you could actually get away with community in this course, but I'm going to choose Ultimate because I'm a web developer and I'm going to want all my web development tools. I actually uninstalled this just for this course, so I gotta get back on my web development tools. If you wanna be a web developer, would highly suggest that you develop uh, choose ultimate. But if you're just choosing this for a course, 
doesn't matter. Okay, so IntelliJ has been installed and I am going to go ahead and open it up. Now you may be brought to a screen that does not look like this, but what you want to do is you want to go and you want to go up here to file and you want to create your own project if you haven't already. And what's going to happen is you're gonna be brought here to new project and you can enter Java, Java beginner, just call it whatever you want, Java beginner course 2022 and don't change anything else just leave it just leave it the way it is just make sure that you don't select anything down here okay so we're going to go ahead and create it and we would like to open it up in this window i'm going to show you where not, where you're going to probably live your life like 90 percent of the time until you get done with your class or your course or becoming like a developer so really most of it's going to be right in here you're going to be in here most of the time you may mess up here, you change some settings, really wouldn't worry about anything else. But the other part where you're going to be spending the most time is going to be up here. Using this button, this is the green button, but if you notice here, there is, the, like the, the green button's not lit up. So what does that mean? Um, it means that we don't have any file for this to run. So. When you, whenever you first install Java, you have all of this stuff right here. Don't worry about, don't even worry what external libraries are. Don't even worry about what scratches or consoles are. Um, don't even worry what I, idea is. Don't even, the only thing that you should worry about is this source file right here. And I clicked on it by accident, don't do that. So what you wanna do next is you want to create what is called a package. And a package is an alg I'm just kidding. A package is just a sim it's just a folder. That's like really all that it is. <laughs> okay, I'm being like weird. All right. So what we want to do, you could call it anything, but I'm just going to call it main. And then I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to right click again. So we just create this and it'll have this little thing, this weird circle thing. Don't know what that is. Then I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call this main as well too. So main, main. All right, so what just happened? What is a class? A class is a way to group your code. A class is a way to hold code together. Package could also be thought of as a way to hold code together. Um, in package, if you will notice a lot of times that it will have com and this is called reverse qualified domain. And they do that so that it's unique. So you don't have com right here. So in case you, there was other, something else, uh, .com or like a website like .com, it would, um, it would not show it or it would not mess up the program because if you had the same packages, it would mess it up. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to go into here and you want to say, PSVM and what that's going to do is that's going to create what's called an entry point for the file. What is an entry point? An entry point is remember when you were in third grade and they made you put a seed in a bag and the seed would like bust out with like a green like a, a little green leaf would come out of it. This is like that green leaf that will eventually turn into like a giant tree. The tree has to like start somewhere and this is where like that little leaf comes out and it actually germinates. Kind of a weird example, but I like weird examples because they make people think a little bit or they, I don't know, get you out of your comfort zone. So what ha one thing that also happened, like think about what just happened there that didn't happen anywhere else. We got these green buttons. This is very important because you'll notice that whenever we put this public static void main thing here, what happened was these buttons came up and started working. And that means we can actually run our program. Like if you go up here, we can actually begin to run our program. And nothing, it doesn't actually do anything. Congratulations, you just ran your first Java program, but it didn't actually do anything because there's no actual code in it. So let's also go in here and let's make this 
print down here into what's called a console. If you don't know what a console is, um, a console is uh, where you're going to do most of your actual like running the code a lot of times. You, IntelliJ is going to do this for you, but what console is going to do is it's going to log stuff out for you. And we use consoles because we can use command lines. And once you start getting good enough, a command line will be faster than a, a GUI or a GUI. But in this case right here, we just have everything that we need. We don't have to actually type anything in the uh, console. We can just go down here and we can click run. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go and we're going to go type, if you didn't see that there, let me go back. Okay, so what we want to do next is let's print, let's console log something. So a lot of times people are very um, like why do we do console logs or why are we logging stuff down to a console? Why don't we just lock it down to a screen? You could do that, but you would have to have GUI code and you would have to have like some kind of outside framework in order for that to happen or you'd have to de develop like a web app. So it makes sense for us as a programmer just to log it down here as opposed to bringing in all that code in order to get uh, display it on the GUI. And what we're going to do now is we're going to type in S-O-U-T, then we're going to press enter, SOUT. It's almost like a pig snout, like SOUT, like whenever you want to log something to the console down here, what you do, you type in, I think, snout and SOUT. So what we want to do is we want to log hello world to the console. And this is pretty much our quick introduction into the world of programming. And after this, um, we won't have to, we've got everything. We've done a console log. Now we can move on to AI. Just kidding. It's going to be, it's going to take a little bit longer than that. But after this, hello, if you can log something, hello world to a program, congratulations. You've just entered the wonderful world of software development. But anyway, that's going to be the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.